Welcome back to Bluegrass. This beautiful October morning. We're going to do a little inductive retrieve work with Cole, uh, my <laughs> favorite uh, English lab of the month, right? And his mom is standing over behind the camera. So, of course, I had to say he's my favorite this month. Okay, Come on, Cole. All right, so basically what's going to happen here is I have three retrieving items in my vest. Out of these retrie three retrieving items, let me come here and show you. Out of these three retrieving items, okay, Obviously, one of them is Cole's favorite, okay? Now, the key when you're doing retrieving is to always work towards your dog's favorite thing, okay? So I have three things. Now, to get to retrieve his favorite thing, he has to retrieve the things that aren't his favorite things, and there's gonna be a little something in it for him. When he retrieves the things that aren't his favorite things, I'm gonna click and treat and give him a little reward. Now, the reward is not really, uh, in terms of calories, per unit of labor invested in retrieving, it's not really a fair trade, but what it is, is the treat is a physical manifestation of my pleasure. And he knows if he makes me happy, that we're gonna stair step our way towards retrieving the things he likes the most, and we're gonna continue on our walk. Okay, so we'll back up here. Come on, Cole. Very nice. Now you'll notice when I'm working with these uh, English labs that have kind of marginal drive, that I don't put a lot of rules on the retrieving. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna save which one was his favorite for the very end, <laughs> and he stole it. Okay, all right, but anyway, so you'll notice when I'm working with these uh, English labs, especially if they didn't have a lot of, you know, really good early formative training, that I'm not tying our obedience and our retrieving together until my retrieving drive is at a sufficient level uh, to make me kind of happy, right? So I'm working on his obedience uh, uh, separately from his retrieving. We come out here, my head's up, my eyes are out because I'm trying to mimic a situation where I'd be out doing something I enjoy and he's, he, you know, he's enjoying himself. And all of a sudden, something, this is his least favorite, get, falls out of the sky and ends up over in the brush. If he'll go get that and bring it to me, then we're gonna move on to his second favorite thing. Oh my gosh, what a good dog. Now, since he doesn't really love retrieving this uh, dumbbell, okay, then I'm gonna pay him a little bit for it. And when he brought it back, you'll notice he kind of dropped it there. And that's okay because I'm on the ground. If I was standing up, that means I have to bend down. And I'm not about walking around bending down all day. So I'm gonna throw it for him again. He's gonna have to go get it. And we're gonna continue this until he brings it back to my hand. Okay, Cole. Oh, that's a good boy. Very nice dog. He's a very nice dog. Now, one of the reasons I like using the dumbbell is because the dumbbell will encourage dogs to learn to pick things up at their natural balance point in the middle. And you'll see there when Cole came out of the grass with this dumbbell, he had it on the end and it was uncomfortable for him. So he dropped it and then he picked it up from the middle. Well, after enough repetitions of that, he'll just get to where he picks his retrieving item up in the middle uh, each time. So I'm going to do this one one more time. Oh, that's a good boy. Very nice dog. And you'll notice he picked the retrieving item up in the middle and brought it to me and handed it to me. Okay, so that means that we're going to move on to our second retrieving item. But here's the thing. If you watch the other video with Cole, you'll notice that I said I have to keep my repetition uh, volume low. I can have a lot of sessions per day, but I have to keep my repetitions low because he doesn't have just a tremendous amount of drive. And so, you know, for people that are used to seeing field bread labs where you can sit here and throw it as many times as you want, right, and just get repetition after re repetition, with these English style or show bread or bench bread, which is more apt description, Labrador retrievers, you want to keep your reps low, your sessions high, right, and you want to take the retrieving activity away while the dog's still wanting more. And see, you can see how he's looking at me like, hey, Stoney, come on, let's do that again. And I'm just completely ignoring him. I'm fixing to take off walking, and we're not going to do another session for a little while. Now, since we're making a video, of course, I'm going to try to speed this up. So we're just going to walk down here a little ways. I'm going to change directions on the path, and uh, uh, then we'll do a couple more uh, retrieves. Okay. But on your, if you were out actually doing this, this next aspect of our retrieving session, it might be... Uh, you know, 15 or 20 minutes later, okay? Now, an alternative way to do this is just do single retrieves and space them out uh, somewhere between, say, five and 10 minutes uh, per given unit of distance, okay? And that's pretty cool. So, let's see. Uh, I think, cameraman, if you want to go that way, I'll come down here. Now, you remember from the other video, <clears throat> see this shady spot? It was hot the other day. 
and Cole stopped in the shade. He's like, hey, Stone, if you want this thing back, you know, come over here into the shade. When it's cold, I can move back away from the shade, and the shade doesn't, it doesn't affect my retrieving. This time, we're going to go with something Cole likes a little bit more, which is this winged dummy. I'm still going to pay him. Oh, my gosh, very nice dog. He's a good dog. Get another retrieve. Now, one of the things you'll notice with Cole is that when we're retrieving in my retrieving lanes, my mode lanes, you see how nice and fast he goes? Okay, back up there, cameraman. I'm going to throw it off in the weeds a little bit. And you'll watch that Cole is a little bit hesitant when it comes to retrieving in the weeds. Part of that is because of the type of dog that he is. And part of it is because, like, he did not have the proper environmental socialization when he was young. So he doesn't really... It's not really good at like looking at brush and picking a nice line through the brush where he doesn't run into tree limbs and stickers and stuff like that. Um, let me see, cameraman. Can I, can, if I throw it over there, can you see it? So we just do a really short throw so you guys can see it. So I'm going to throw it off in that brush. Good. It got tangled up in the tree, so he's going to have to work a little bit for it. Very nice. You're a good boy. You're very good. Brings it all the way back. Delivers it to my hand, right? And I'm going to do this again. Very nice. Oh, what a good boy. Okay, now that's awesome. All right, now that's a second favorite thing. Now, his actual favorite thing to retrieve is this uh, wool sock. So I know a lot of you, I mean, you don't have access to actual dead birds a lot, but you can buy wings. You can get wings from friends of yours that hunt. The problem with just using the wings is that when you first start doing this with the dog, they go get the wing, then they munch it on the way back, and the wing falls apart, and it, you know, it just is really problematic. So, like, uh, a really good trick is to get a wool sock. It has to be a wool sock. And you put your wing in there, and the, the wool sock basically becomes a sleeve for the wing, and in the beginning stages, you know, like you just got a little bit of wing sticking out. And so the whole sock absorbs the, the, the scent. And the dog gets a chance to put his mouth on the sock. He feels the basic structure of the wing and gets used to it. And then after a while, you start to, you know, peel your sock down and just keep peeling it down, peeling it down, until one day you just take the wing out of the sock, but by then the dog already has a very gentle mouth. He's used to carrying the wing and he doesn't mess up your wings every time he retrieves. All right, so we'll do the same thing. Let's go back this way, cameraman. You can follow me from behind and maybe it'll be a little easier for them to see what I'm doing. Once we get to his favorite thing, I have a little bit more latitude in like how I can do, you know, what we call a walking fetch. So I'm gonna walk and as I walk, I can toss my thing and just continue to walk. Now what the continuing to walk does is it opens up space, which makes the dog naturally want to close down the space, which is encourages, encourages the retreat. So I throw my retrieving item just off the path. I let him go get it. And I just keep walking. Oh, it's a very good dog. You can see Cole's already down here looking at me like he's wanting to uh, you know, do another rep. Big mistake you make with these, this kind of dog, okay, is they get it and they're coming out of there and you reach over them, okay, you move towards them, or you become too vocal. A lot of times you don't understand, like, how your dog, the, the size differential between you and your dog. Like, I'm a very small person, but look how big I am compared to this dog. So imagine you're just somewhere doing something and Shaq just walks over to you with his hand out reaching towards your face. Of course, it would be a little intimidating. So a lot of guys accidentally intimidate their dogs into dropping uh, their retrieving items well in front of them. Well, then what happens is, is you as the dog trainer, you start getting frustrated when the dog's coming back, and then you start fussing at them. Like, bring that here. Fetch it up. Here. Bring it. Here. And then the dog like is like, okay, am I in trouble? Do I need to let this go? Because I don't. if this is dad's, I don't want to like keep it from him, right? Because it's, you know, he's the boss. And that's a really prominent thing with uh, English Labrador Retrievers. Now, for you guys who've trained a lot of field dogs, you say, Stoney, that's, that's bunk. I always do. Okay, different kind of dog, right? Okay, when you're training a dog that has, you know, six, seven generations of high-level retrievers in its uh, pedigree, you can get away with a lot of bad training, okay? You don't have to be that good a trainer. I mean, like, I've got a seven-week-old dog. If I never trained it at all, like, it's going to be a good retriever just because it comes from a long line of good retrievers. 
but like for dogs that were bred a little bit more for their looks and personality, not so much for just retrieving drive, you got to be on point with what you're doing, okay? So I'll, I'll walk, uh, watch, I'll walk backwards. So let me see, cameraman, can you see that spot right there? All right, so I'm going to throw my retrieving item off in that spot. Now watch, I'm going to run backwards, open up some space. Oh my gosh, what a good dog. Oh my gosh, look, I'll even turn and walk this way. Oh my gosh, look. See how that sucked that dog right to me? All right, now, so here's the real key. I'd kind of like to do that one more time because if I did it one more time, <laughs> I would look even more awesome as a dog trainer. You have to resist that one more time urge, okay? And I don't always do a good job of it, but I try. I'm not getting better than that today, okay? This dog's mom is here. He hasn't seen his mom in a couple of weeks. Uh, like, he's excited to see her, and I'm, I'm really, like, blessed to have had him pay attention to me as well as he had so far. I walked away. He came right up to me. The only mistake he made was I would have rather him come up to my left side rather than my right side, but that's okay. I'm not doing better than that right now, okay? So I'm just going to end the session right there, leave him wanting more, okay, so that like the next time I say, hey Cole, let's go out back, he's going to be like jumping right to me and he's saying, hey Stoney, please, please take me back and do more fetching than last time. And if you can ever get your dog where they're super fired up about going to the retrieving field and they want you to do more than last time, then you know that your drive is headed in the right direction, okay. And once your drive is headed in the right direction, you've got an overall positive uh, understanding of the experience from the dog's perspective, then you can throw your obedience in there because the dog starts to look at obedience as what leads to the fun stuff and you are off to the races. All right, guys, I'll see you next week.